Hey, all my YouTube followers, how you doing? I know it's been a really long time since I've uh, done any videos or had anything up to show you, but I'm actually here with some really good news. Um, a lot of you had asked in the past, what does the back look like that lifts the pins and all that good stuff? Well, um, I have actually gone patent pending on my pin setter. All the paperwork has been filed, so I actually can talk about it now. And that's what we're going to do here now. So we're going to show you exactly how the pin lift works. And we'll get into how the pit works, separating the pins in the ball and the ball door and um, what's called the auger. So we're going to start off here right now. I'm going to try and do this best I can with my uh, camera in hand and then explain it all to you. But what we have here is these cleats. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of them on a chain. They come up and um, as the pin is coming up, it's going to hit against these uh, pin ejectors as I call them. And then it goes into this, what I call the pin orientator, and then onto this conveyor, and then moves. So a lot of you have seen probably this view before, where you're seeing the uh, conveyor drop the pins into the turret. This is also our new turret design. Uh, we've got rid of the old one. It had a lot of parts. This is a much more simplified version. It's made uh, from just a uh, few pieces versus the other one, which had a lot of different pieces to make it work. But um, back to the uh, lift here. So that's how it works. I'm actually going to run some pins real quick. Uh, actually, before I show you that, what we have down in the pin or the pit is a, a turntable, as you can see. So this disc down here turns like so, and then the pins go into the lift and then are brought up. Now in this area here, this piece right here, as you can see, it's kind of got a spiral on it. That is called the auger. And that actually is what propels the ball over to the door there. Uh, so what happens is the ball basically sits against the cushion and on the auger as the auger spinning and gets pushed. It can't fall through because it, obviously it's too big, but the pins can and they drop down onto the turntable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a cycle. Uh, it's going to be a number two cycle so we get pins into the pit. And uh, it's going to get noisy, but I'll try and uh, show you and explain things as best I can as we're running. So, uh, here we go. So, as you can see there, the pins are spinning on the uh, sorter disc. And then going into the uh, cleats. Sometimes it takes a second or two for them to get all orientated, but then they go up pretty quick. There you go, and then up here, you can see them being ejected and getting orientated. So it all works pretty well. Uh, really no moving parts, unlike uh, some of the other pin setters on the market. Uh, I know Brunswick has their version of this lift. Works a little bit different than what this is. Uh, I'm gonna run that again for you. I'll go to the other side. So again, there the pins are going in. There's the auger spinning, you can see right there. And here's the pins coming out. And one more. Actually two more, there we go. So I'm gonna throw this on pause right now, go down and get a ball, and then we'll come back and show you how the uh, ball is pushed to the side with the pins uh, down below. Okay, I'm back here at the pit. I got a ball sitting down in there, as you can see. I'm gonna do a cycle two to uh, get everything running. So there you see the uh, auger start up and push the ball, over, and there it goes. So it's really simple. I'm just gonna drop this in there again so you can hopefully see that. So there you go. And that's how that works. So again, uh, very simple design. Very quick for getting the ball out of there. You can handle multiple balls. And it uh, works pretty well. It took a long time to actually come up with that. Uh, but uh, I'm very happy with it. So Next I'm going to go and uh, I'll reposition and show you how the spot and respotting works. Because uh, you may have caught glimpses of it in other videos. But I really didn't obviously go into the details of it. But now I can do that. So uh, let me go get set up. Okay, here we go. So what we have here, 
We have what's called the chute deck. Obviously it has chutes on it, and that's where the pins drop into out of the turret. This down here, I'm going to move the wire away, this deck here is called the respot deck, and then down below it obviously is what we call the main deck. Now what goes on is this respot deck can actually slides back and forth, and I'm going to try and show you, but there's a slot. So basically the head of the pin comes up into here, and then as the respot deck moves forward, it picks the pins up. So this would not be suitable for regulation bowling. This is a, an arcade game, more or less, so this works fine. Um, it's more realistic than obviously the string pin setters. But uh, occasionally if a pin goes off spot a little bit, it will move it back on spot. But that's one of the trade-offs because this respot deck is just one single piece. So unlike the pin setters of today, all the other manufacturers, they use a lot of parts to pick the pins up because they have to meet the uh, USB-C and other governing bodies of uh, bowling regulations and keep a pin on the spot where it moves to if it goes off spot. I don't have to do that. So... I get away with uh, just having this single deck uh, be able to pick the pins up. Um, again, one piece and it works well. So I'm going to move around to the front of the machine and hopefully you'll be able to get a good view of what that looks like. Okay, I'm at the front of the machine. Hopefully we're going to see this. There you go. There's the respot deck moving forward. And now it's going to just set the pins back down, move back, and that's it. So very simple design. Whoops. Very simple design, works very well. And uh, now for the best part is that deck, this respot deck here, also acts as the spotting deck. So what happens here is that the respot deck is gonna move forward and then come back to a certain position. And what happens is these holes here actually, trying to get here, the hole here will be a lot smaller than the belly of the pin. So it's actually gonna hold the pin up. When the deck gets all the way down to the, uh, the pin deck, that respot deck will move forward and release the pin. So I'm gonna try and sit here and show you that as best we can. We'll see how that works out. Not sure we'll be able to see everything, but there you go, you saw it move forward and back. Now the chute deck's gonna move forward, holds the pins. And there you go. Probably couldn't see the re spot deck move back, but it did. Um, I'm going to try a different angle here real quick. So right now I just did a single cycle. It's going to detect like it's a strike. There's the respot deck. As you can see, the little thing's a little smaller now. Try this angle. And then if you saw there, the respot deck move back. And that's what releases the pin. So, uh, again, that's a very simple design. It's uh, one piece that's actually doing the job of two different parts on all the other pin setters. And those two different parts actually have a lot of little individual parts to make everything work. So, I was able to come in here and simplify this. And this is why I've kind of kept it quiet about how it works because we were doing the patent uh, filing. And um, as I said, we are now patent pending. So. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to ask them. Um, I'll try and do some games in the future from the side, showing you a little bit more. But uh, overall, that's how the pin setter works, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it.